and darling viewers, this is Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm doing another Top 5 Wednesday. As always, the Goodreads group is in the description below, as well as the complete list of books that I'm talking about. This week's topic, or rather last week's topic, is books that defy genre. Sorry, Halloween happened and it kind of messed up my filming schedule. So this list, books that defy genre, are books that fit into multiple categories, and it's hard to pinpoint it. For this list, I tried to exclude books that fit firmly into genres that cross over. So excluding books that are steampunk because they might fit into historical fiction and sci-fi and paranormal fantasy, but like steampunk is also a genre. So these are books that kind of just, they're all over the place. I mean, not in a bad way. I appreciate the fact that they're all over the place, but if you're trying to shelve them in a library, uh, it becomes a little bit problematic of where exactly they go. So the first book on my list is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Uh, this one follows Simon Snow, and it's he goes to a magical school called Watford, and he is the chosen one, and all the like chaos of trying to defeat this evil wizard who is trying to take over the world. So first off, this is a fan fiction. And also not a fan fiction at the same time. It's based off a story that she started in her other book, Fangirl, which is about a girl named Kath who is obsessed with the Simon Snow books. And so this is Rainbow Rowell's take on her version of the Simon Snow, which is kind of weird because there's the canon version of the Simon Snow in Fangirl and there's Kath versions of Simon Snow and this is Rainbow Rowell's version of Simon Snow. On the other hand, it's also kind of Harry Potter fanfiction, and also not, because it's enough to be its own thing. That in of itself gets kind of quirky. It also fits into fantasy genre, YA genre, romance, and LGBT books. So it's kind of got everything going on in it, which I really love about this book. It is so well done. And I just want to live in the world of Simon Snow, and I thoroughly get why Kath is obsessed with it in Fangirl. The next book on my list is the Enchanted Ink series by Shauna Swenson. This is chick lit fantasy and mysteries. Um, it follows Katie Chandler, who is not magical, but she works at a magic company. Magic is real, and she works for a company that produces spells, and her job is to see through spells to make sure that people aren't lying because magic doesn't work on her. There's also mystery involved in each of the books, and the entire series reads like chiclet, which kind of differentiates it from other paranormal romances, even though there is definitely romance in these stories. And later books in the series also kind of tackle certain genres. For instance, one of the books has fairy tales in it and kind of plays with the Cinderella story. Another one of the books plays with spies and going undercover. There's one where she gets trapped inside a romantic fantasy, so like living in one of those rom-coms. I love this series and these characters, but I also love how this world can kind of go anywhere because of how it's set up with the magic. The next on my list is Outlander by Diana Galvedon. I've only read book one, but I'm assuming the rest of them kind of have this problem too. Um, they are historical fiction, but also romance, time travel, and there's political intrigue in them. There's probably way more that I can't quite put my finger on, but this one's kind of hard to place. So in this series, we have Claire who time travels back from 1945 to the 1740s where she gets stuck in Scotland and becomes embroiled in all this clan politics, and especially the clans fighting the English who are trying to come in and take over Scotland. At the same time, there's this whole romance thing going on with her and Jamie, who is one of the Scottish clansmen, and it's also complicated by the fact that Claire's married in the 1940s. So we get historical fiction both from the 1945 setting but also from the 1740s setting. So there's a lot going on in these books and it's hard to put a finger on it and say that it's just one thing because there's so much going on. But I love it. I love the two of them. I love Jamie and Claire together. <laughs> the next book on my list is Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency by Douglas Adams. Not only does this defy genre, it's hard to pinpoint what the plot is to explain it. Um, this is a mystery, it's also sci-fi, it's a contemporary story, it involves time travel, and is it alien world or a future world? One of the two of them. Like, there's so much going on in here. 
So our title character, Dirk Gently, is a holistic detective. So he's a private investigator who believes that starting off on one mystery is also going to lead you to other mysteries and they are all connected. Like everything in the universe is connected. So there's a mystery of the missing billionaire in here, but then there's also this magic trick that seems impossible and that ties into it too, as well as these electric monks. Like there's a ton of stuff happening in these books. I love it. I enjoy it. It's quirky and fun and like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, it kind of goes everywhere and it's doing its own thing. But it's definitely hard to like figure out what genre it should go into, especially whether it's a mystery or a sci-fi book. The last book on my list is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. This one gets complicated because there's multiple plot lines happening in here that are related, but not really. So we have this fictional version of William Goldman telling the story about how much he loved this fairy tale, The Princess Bride, growing up and what it means to him and how he's trying to pass it on to his son and how it started him off abridging the book because it's like a 900 page behemoth that is impossible to read. He also talks about the history of why the book was written and what the author was doing at the time and delving into that. It's all made up but it's kind of like a nonfiction look at what the author was doing. And then there's the actual fairy tale that's happening inside of it. So on the whole we get this book that is part satire. In fact it's a satire of satires. It's a fairy tale, it's a romance, it's a contemporary novel, and it's historical fiction and it's an adventure story. Um, there is magic and just everything. I mean, I love this book because it is literally everything happens in this. And no matter what mood I am, some part of the story is going to connect with me. Whether it's a contemporary storyline of William Goldman trying to share the story with his son, or if it's following S. Morgenstern, the original author, and why he wrote the book, or if it's the actual fairy tale following Buttercup and Wesley. So much happening in this book. So it's really a hard book to kind of place and say where it goes. I mean, it probably just goes in fiction. So there was my list of top five books that defy genre or are really hard to pinpoint where they go. Let me know in the comments below what are your favorite genre defying books. And if you agree or disagree with any of these books, like are any of these set, like that's definitely a certain genre. Or did I miss the mark <laughs> on explaining any of these? Peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.